Hi. My name's Mark, and I'm a workaholic. I've been a workaholic for, well, as long as I can remember, really. I don't know how it really started. It just crept up on me, or just part of who I am. Anyway, I'm here because after 48 years, I want to do something about it. I want to change. Mark, you all right, mate? Dan here, long time no see. Hope you're all right, mate, and Ange and the kids. Just thought I'd give you a call. No real reason, just been ages. Anyway, uh, give me a call back when you get this, mate. Be good to catch up. Go for a pint or something. Yeah, let me know. All right, uh, cheers, mate. Hey, fella, it's Steve. You still around for that round of golf tomorrow with Brian and Pete? You'd better be. Uh, you cancelled on us enough already, big man. I'll come after you with me three wood if you were in check again, and that's a promise, not a threat. So see you tomorrow, mate, hopefully. Hey, Dad, if you get this, can you give me a call back, please? I know you're probably super busy and it's not super urgent, so no big rush. But would be good to talk something over when you get a moment. Love you. Bye. Mark, call me back when you get this. I wouldn't personally call myself a workaholic. Well, I didn't used to anyway. That more comes from my family. I'm driven, sure. Sometimes a bit too driven. But that's not the worst thing, right? I just want to do the best I can. The best I can for my clients, for my family, for myself. And it's worked. I'm the CEO of my own company and it's very successful. We're in domestic air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps and domestic solar panels. Eco ways to heat homes. I started the business 30 years ago, so we were way ahead of the times back then. We've just signed a huge deal with an international automotive company. It's probably my biggest achievement to date, so I'm very proud of it. We're scaling up our domestic heating technology so that it can be used in the car and vehicle manufacturing process. And I've licensed that to a car manufacturer in Germany. It's a big step up from eco-heating of homes and, well, a very lucrative jump from the domestic to the industrial market. Feather in my cap, if I do say so myself. I'm proud of my family, too. Uh, there's just the three of us. My wife, Ange, me and our daughter, Holly. Holly's at uni now. Well, just graduated, actually. Uni. Wouldn't use that word back in my day. Look at me. I hate the way people today endlessly abbreviate everything. Anyway, my daughter said to me, Dad, it's mad. The years just seem to fly by. Yes, years do tend to fly by when they don't start until October and end in April. I think the secret to my success lies mostly in my hard work. Every day is a work day for me, brimming with potential to achieve, to make progress. Work hard, play hard, without the play hard bit. Work-life balance is for losers. That's what I used to say, anyway. When it used to be just me, it was pretty simple. Me and the pumps and the customers. Now I've got a team around me, so I'm managing people too. They're great folk, but being the boss is a huge responsibility. But I think I'm a good leader. Leading from the front, that's my secret. Is there anyone who works for me who works harder than I do? I think not. Anyone who puts more hours in than me. And I like to muck in with everything. Always have. I want to be able to say to people, I'm not asking you to do anything that I won't do or I can't. There were peers of mine who were just as capable as me, I'm sure, but maybe even more so. But were they prepared to burn the midnight oil? No. Were they prepared to make the sacrifices? No. 
This has been my life for 30 years, running along the corporate treadmill. Constant deadlines, endless to-do lists, emails, voicemails, meetings. My work is me, my work is who I am. I am Mark and I work bloody hard. I'm not asking for sympathy, I'm not asking for a medal, that's just business, that's just how it is. I can't count the number of times I've been at work when I should have been at home or even when at home that my mind is still at work. And, and things I've missed, sports days, weddings, parties, birthdays, anniversaries, the list goes on. You name it, I've missed it. Mark, you all right, mate? Dan again, just checking in again about that pint. Don't know if you got my message the other day. Anyway, yeah, let me know. Uh, be good to see you. All right, cheers, mate. Hey, a fella, golf tomorrow. You in, you out. Let me know, big man. Don't make me come around with me nine iron. Hey, Dad, it's me again. Still be good to talk something over if you have a minute. Love you. Bye. Mark, please pick up your phone. I finally got to that point, or close to it at least, where I've achieved a level of success that I've been striving towards for years. But having got there, I'm not as happy as I thought I'd be, or as I'd hoped I'd be. I've been asking why that is quite a lot. I went for one of those health checkups recently for the first time ever. Getting to that age where you're supposed to go to the doctors occasionally, even if there's nothing wrong with you. It goes against the grain in many ways, but if somebody taking a bit of blood out of my arm once a year and weighing me helps to keep me healthy and useful a bit longer, then that seems like a worthwhile investment of time to me. I make time to exercise, so I'm in good shape ish and healthy touch wood i enjoy a good round of golf did you know that the average walk around a golf course is five miles you wouldn't catch me doing that for the sake of it i guess it's a bit like when parents sneak vegetables into things for kids and used to do that with holly a bit of a fussy eater as a child she was <laughs> anyway Golf. Expensive hobby. Good set of clubs sets you back best part of a grand. I'm talking good ones, not the best, but good. And then there's course membership. Again, the better the club, the pricier it is. And you want somewhere nice if you're going to take clients there. Then there's the clothing and the shoes. But like I say, you wouldn't catch me walking five miles in any other setting. So I guess it's worth it for that alone. Well, let alone the networking opportunities and the, oh, the unbeatable feeling of hitting a ball really hard when you're a bit stressed. Beats therapy any day of the week. I don't play as much as I'd like, but I try. Hello, Mark, mate. Dan here. Sorry, message number three. Uh, but just bumped into Dave Simmons, of all people. Mad. Didn't even know he was still living round here. Anyway, we said we'd look at maybe going for a drink next week, so thought could maybe kill two birds with one stone and do something the three of us. Be like the old days. Hey, fella, it's Steve here. Um, you're making me a bit nervous, mate. You still up for later? It's nice weather, so it'd be good to get around in before that turns for the winter. So let me know, mate. Hopefully, see you later. Hey, Dad. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. It starts at 11, so I meet you and Mum at 10 so that we've got enough time to sit down and stuff. Mum knows where. See you in the morning. Love you. Bye. Mark. Hello. When I ask myself the question, what's important to you, Mark, it always seems to come back to money. I'm sure I could come up with things like protecting my family, making them feel safe and happy, giving them what I never had, going on nice holidays and having memorable experiences. But rightly or wrongly, my brain just takes all of those things back to money, earning enough money. I guess it's my childhood. That's what psychologists say everything's about, don't they? And I suppose they're right. We didn't have much when I was growing up. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, we were comfortable, and this isn't a sob story, far from it. Humble, that's the word, I suppose. And that was fine. It drove me on to be who I wanted to be. It gave me a hunger for success. I was determined that my family would have all the opportunities that I didn't, all of the stability, all of the comfort. And don't get me wrong, I'd be lying if I didn't admit to enjoying it too. The feeling of power and success when you make it to the top. And of course, when you've got there, you've got to keep pushing forward because otherwise it becomes a defensive game rather than an attacking one. And who wants to play a defensive game, honestly? Not me, that's for sure. There's that saying, isn't there? Standing still is moving backwards or something like that anyway. I think that's completely true. Oh, well, it feels true for me anyway. I love making progress. Progress, not perfection. I try telling myself that every day. That's what winning is. Progress is for winners. Standing still is going backwards, and going backwards is for losers. I'm not a loser. I don't ever want to be one. I wouldn't be able to look my family in the eye, or myself. All that means I'm not very good at relaxing. Relaxing feels like standing still. Even when I'm doing something like reading a book or watching TV, Unless it's something about work, I really, really struggle. I, I get these feelings of well, guilt, I suppose it is, which is mad, really. I love the Second World War, and when I do manage to sit down and read a book about it or watch a documentary, I'm, I'm in heaven. But it's like this it's pain barrier I have to get through every time. I look at the book and I think, that's not about work or... That's not going to help you to make progress. I think back to when I was younger, and truth be told, I would have loved to study history, but I pushed it to one side for something more practical. I keep on thinking about doing a short course. I even booked myself in for one a year or two back, but then didn't show up for it in the end, even though I'd paid for it. Wasteful. Not like me at all, really. But I was just too overwhelmed with work. And when it came to the crunch, I realized I just couldn't afford the time for something that wasn't gonna have an impact on the job. It's the same with golf. If I'm due to play around for networking purposes, then sure, I'm there every time without fail. But the idea of just going to play with my mates or just going down the driving range on my own to hit a few balls, terrifying. I judge myself every time I even think of doing that. It's like I'm being selfish, which I suppose it is. So maybe the key isn't stopping thinking that it is, but trying to get my head around the idea that sometimes it's okay to be a bit selfish. But that is completely and utterly terrifying. Hello, Mark. Sorry, Dan again. I was just giving you another try about that drink with Pete. I'm guessing this is still your number. Anyway, if it's not, then sorry to whoever this is getting through to. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you're all right, Mark. No problems, etc. Take care, mate. Hey, fella. Um, look, I'm guessing you're not coming, and no worries about that. I'm just hoping that everything's OK, mate. So give me a shout just to let me know you're all right. Um, look, I know you've been under a lot of pressure recently, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just hope you haven't done anything silly and that this gets to you all right. Um, yeah. A anyway, I'm sure you're fine, but uh, yeah, take care, Valor, and, and see you soon, I'm sure. Jesus. I mean, sure, I, I was under pressure, but no any ending it all. I can't believe Steve would think that. Surely he was joking, right? That's when it hit me. Christ, I'm so out of touch that someone thinks I might be dead. And not just dead, but... That's ridiculous. That's not me. But it was. Dad, where are you? It's about to start? <sighs> Look, I've got to go in now, but Mum's going to wait outside until the last minute, OK? 
Love you. Bye. Mark, this is ridiculous. It's our daughter's graduation, for God's sake. You promised. Where are you? Unbelievable. Holly wasn't that upset about me missing her graduation. Well, that's what she said anyway. It said that she understood and knew that without all the sacrifices I'd made, she probably wouldn't even have been standing there anyway. But I was gutted. And Ange, obviously. For God's sake, Mark. And I know, I know, OK? Do you? Do you, though? Because I don't think you do, Mark. Ange, please, I've had a really long week. I don't need this right now. Don't need this right now? What, you don't need our daughter to graduate? No, I obviously don't mean that. This isn't something we can do again next week, Mark. It's not dinner with the neighbours or a walk or an evening in. We can't do this again, ever. That was it, and you ruined it, not just for you, but for me too. And most importantly, for Holly. She said it was fine, that she understood. Of course she did, because she's polite, and because she's kind, and because she knows there's no point saying anything else. What good would it do? It's just who you are, Mark. You're not ever going to change. I don't think you're even capable of changing. It's just you, and that's fine. We don't need to go into all of the good it's done, as I know, trust me, I know. But that doesn't mean there isn't a lot of bad that goes with it too. And on days like this, I really question whether the good's worth all of the bad. She forgave me, as usual. But that day shook me. I realised I needed to try and change something. Work was everything to me. I didn't mean it to be, but it was. Work was everything I was. I started to ask myself, who am I without my work? Who is Mark? Not Mark the CEO, but Mark. Who is he? Who am I? After that, I tried to spend more time with my family. I tried taking the odd day off here and there. But if I'm being completely honest, I felt like I was a bit of an intrusion, I suppose is the word. Like I was just a bit in the way. I wasn't used to being there and they weren't used to having me there. I won't lie, one thing did miff me a bit. Ange and Holly had been going on for years about me spending more time with them, but now that I was making myself free, they suddenly seemed to be busy all the time. I sometimes felt like saying, what's all this whinging about me not being here for you when you don't even have the time for me? When we did spend time together, I found it very frustrating. I'd make suggestions and Ange would just tell me that what I was suggesting was a load of rubbish, that I didn't have a clue what I was talking about and I should just leave it to her. That sounds cruel. It wasn't. She wasn't being unfair or unkind. It was mostly little things. Like when I suggested a better way to load the dishwasher. She wasn't having any of it. Said it was easier to do it her way because that was what she was used to. But I tried rearranging a cupboard or two as well and again she just put it straight back to how it was. The only time we nearly came to blows was when I tried to start labelling some tins and some drawers. And walked in on me, grabbed the sharpie out of my hand, threw it in the bin and said, God knows how I'm going to face up to you retiring if this is what I've got to look forward to. <laughs> she said it with a smile on her face, but it still hurt a bit. It wasn't just family that I tried to see more of. I tried to get in contact with friends that I'd neglected or let drift away too. Hello, Steve, mate. Mark here. Uh, sorry I've been off the grid recently. Manic at work. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, sorry I missed that round the other day. I hope uh, Brian and Pete were all right. Anyway, um, I've got a slightly quieter few weeks coming up, so um, don't suppose you're up for a round at the weekend. Um, let me know and uh, hopefully catch you soon, mate. Bye. Hello, Dan. Mark here. 
Sorry, I've been off the grid recently. Manic at work. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, hope you had a good time with Dave S. Uh, sorry I didn't make it along. But uh, be good to grab that pint at some point, if you're still up for that. Uh, let me know and hopefully catch you soon. Bye for now. I waited a couple of days. Nothing. So I tried again. Hello, Steve, mate. Mark again. Uh, just thought I'd give you another try. Don't know if you got my last message. Uh, no rush, but uh, just let me know as and when you're about for a round. It'd be good to see you, mate. Bye for now. Hello, Dan. Uh, Mark again. Uh, just thought I'd give you another try. Don't know if you got my message the other day. But anyway, either way, uh, be good to see you as and when. So uh, give me a call as and when you get this. Bye for now. Frustrating. Just like Ange. Going on at me for ages to make a bit of time and then when I do, nowhere to be seen. It was like I couldn't get my head around the fact that just because I was suddenly available, it didn't mean other people would be too. It made me feel completely out of control. It was frustrating and to be honest, I really didn't like it. I know what you're thinking. What a hypocrite. And you're right. They weren't half as bad as me. Both of them got back to me a day or two afterwards, far better than I ever did. But still, it shook me. It scared me. The idea of a life where I wasn't in control of everything. It's scary, full stop. The idea of retirement. I mean, in many ways, it's something I've dreamed of for years, but in all honesty, the prospect of giving up work, of, of giving up the power and status that goes with it, terrifying. Work is my life. Work is what I understand. Work is who I am. I've uh, been trying a few things to uh, Make that step easier when it finally comes. One, committing to leaving the office at 6 p.m. every day. Or, more importantly, making sure I've got somewhere to go or something to do. I don't want to be constantly under Angie's feet. Two, making sure that I have at least one clear day a week. No work, not even emails. Making sure that when we go on holiday, I spend at least half the days not checking in with the office. Making sure that when I work weekends, it's structured, not just taking over. Eventually, I want to have weekends just as weekends. No work at all. Imagine. Now, when I get home, the phone goes off. Terrifying, but I'm starting to feel a bit more present, a bit more switched off. And finally, learning to delegate better. There are some things that I have to do that no one else can, but I'm starting to be a bit braver when it comes to letting other people show what they can do too. It's quite the list when I say it all out loud at once, but ultimately it's just lots of small manageable things, like trying to call Holly more. Hi, Dad. Hi, Holly. You all right? Just thought I'd give you a quick call. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You? Yeah, really well, thanks. Um, just thought I'd call to have a chat. Sorry, Dad. Is this about anything urgent? Just that I'm in the middle of something, so... Uh... Uh, no, uh, no, nothing urgent. Don't worry. Nothing in particular at all, actually. Uh, just thought I'd give you a call. Uh, OK. Uh, I'll give you a call another time, if that's OK. Sorry, just a bit busy now. Yeah, yeah, fine. No worries. OK, cool. Love you. Bye. Love you too. It's not that she doesn't want to talk to me. I know that. And it's not that that makes me sad. Life gets busy once you're a grown up. I, I absolutely get that. I think what does make me feel sad is realising that there are certain things about her growing up 
that I've missed and I won't ever get back. But that's life, I suppose. I've been doing lots of thinking recently and it's really helped with lots of things actually, like, well, trying to overcome my addiction to work. Because that's what it is. If I'm truthful with myself, it is an addiction. And that is an illness. I'm not wanting to be too dramatic about it, but it is, if I'm being honest with myself. I've spent a couple of lunch times in the local park recently, just sitting alone on a bench and thinking. It sounds a bit tragic when I put it that way, but actually it's been great. I've been asking myself all these questions. Who could I be if I wasn't this? Who could I be if I allowed myself a new identity? An identity that wasn't Mark, the CEO. A golfer? A historian? A gardener? A cook? A better husband? A better dad? I suppose putting it that way has helped me to see it in a positive way for the first time. Not what I'd lose, but what I'd gain. Don't get me wrong, I'm still terrified. I'm afraid of letting go. I'm afraid of running out of money. I mean, I know we have enough, but there's just something about me that really struggles to accept that there's ever enough. Not out of greed, out of fear. I suppose I'm afraid of letting go of the strongman identity of Mark, the CEO, too. But maybe one of the biggest shows of strength is being ready to be vulnerable, ready to try something new. So that's what I'm going to do. Take a big old jump off the top diving board into the unknown. My name's Mark, I'm a workaholic, and it's time to change. Wish me luck. <laughs>